So beautiful the sea, isn't it? But not just beautiful, also important and important for me here now to tell you the story of a city, Ravenna, that owes so much to the sea for its past, uh, its development, its history. Ravenna is popular worldwide for its mosaics, you know, the early Christian monuments, but also Dante Alighieri who lived in Ravenna the last years of his life. Ok, but maybe you're thinking, Stefano, what Dante Alighieri, what the mosaics, what the Christian's monuments have to do with the sea, here in Ravenna which is not even on the sea? Well, actually it's not like that. There are lots of stories about the sea and the city, and if you want to know them, just watch this video and come with me. Well, Ravenna has a very long history. The remains of a pile-dwelling village and Etruscan remains have been found in the area and dated around 530 before Christ. But the city began to be important with the Romans. They built the city in the middle of a coastal lagoon. Therefore, sheltered by the sea and by the Lamone river, which flowed from west to east, and the Padenna river, which flowed from north to south. Later the Romans built a port in Classe, a small area south of Ravenna. It housed a large military fleet with the purpose of ensuring the safety of the Mediterranean Sea. The port of Classe was later connected to the Po River Delta, and at its peak it could host up to 250 warships. So now you begin to realize the importance of the sea for the development of the city. But not only the port, Ravenna was the capital city of three different kingdoms for about 350 years. Brief but due footnote of history. We are at the end of the 4th century. Theodosius divided the Roman Empire into Eastern Roman Empire and Western Roman Empire, which would never be reunited again. In 402, Honorius, the Western Roman Emperor, moved the capital city from Mediolanum, Milan, to Ravenna, because Milan was besieged by the barbarians, so the city was far from the mountains, uh, let's say from where the barbarians came from, Central and Northern Europe. Plus, we just saw Ravenna had a military port, which was a defensive port, of course, but also an open door to the east, so Ravenna was more connected to its Eastern Roman Empire brothers, through the sea, the sea again, so connected to Byzantium, Constantinople or Istanbul as we want to call it. So, Ravenna capital city of the Western Roman Empire until the year 476, a crucial year, because Odoacer, King King of the Herus, deposed the last Roman Emperor of the West and this fact led to the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476, when, according to the historians, ended the ancient history and began the Middle Ages. Do you realize the importance of what happened here in Ravenna? But soon the Ostrogoths arrived with Theodoric, and Ravenna became the capital of the Ostrogothic Kingdom. Indeed, you can still visit Theodoric's palace, which is this one you're watching, and the mausoleum of Theodoric. Inside it may seem a little bare, but it's actually very beautiful. It's almost 1500 years old. It was built in white stone with huge blocks, dry stone one on the top of the other. The whole structure is held together by that huge dome you see, which is 33 feet wide and weighs about 230 tons. And it's a single block of stone. How did they build it, transported it and placed it up there? Probably with the huge ropes tied to that kind of handle around the dome. In the past there may have been a colonnade on the upper level of the mausoleum, and probably the handles were also the base for sculptures. Twelve handles, twelve sculptures, maybe of the apostles, we are not sure. What we are sure of is that in the past the mausoleum of Theodoric was much higher than it is today. 
It could be seen from the city center and from the sea, which was closer at the time. Later, sediments settled in this area covered the lower floor of the mausoleum, which was brought to light in 1844. That's why the lower floor has a different color compared to the upper floor. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Lower the music and let's take a step back. So, we are talking about Ravenna, capital city of the Western Roman Empire, then of the Ostrogothic Kingdom. And you think, in the middle of this mess, the Eastern Roman Empire just stayed on the sidelines to watch it happen? Uh, no, I don't think so. They reconquered part of the Italian peninsula, established the Byzantine Exarchate, which is a territorial division of the Eastern Roman Empire, and so Ravenna, capital of the Exarchate. So, from a small town, Ravenna became an economic, political and administrative crux, and that pushed a lot of culture, art, building, especially when Ravenna was the capital city of the Byzantine Exarchate, because it was the vital point between Western and Eastern culture, once again thanks to the sea. So, for its glorious past, its early Christian monuments, its mosaics, since 1996, Ravenna has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And you think I come all the way here and not give you some UNESCO? Of course I'll do! Okay, I go! So, let's begin this journey through the most beautiful mosaics of Ravenna. Let's start with the 5th century chapel of Sant'Andrea the only orthodox monument still standing in the city built at the time of Theodoric. All the decorations in the chapel are clearly Arian, such as the warrior Christ with the cross. A few steps away we find the Neonian Baptistry, where a great mosaic depicts Jesus in the river Jordan in receiving baptism. From here we move to Santa Polinare Nuovo Basilica. It's impossible to describe it in few seconds. Stunning, colorful mosaics depict scenes from the life of Jesus Christ, the Palace of Theodoric, the Epiphany, the Port of Classe, and cover the entire walls of the central nave. What stands out is the Byzantine influence in the beautiful golden background of the mosaics. The Santa Polinare Classe Basilica is just as good, but here the apse shows off some great mosaics with the representation of the divine nature of Christ, according to the anti-Aryan trends of the time, that are, instead, endorsed in the baptistry of the Aryans, last but not least of our brief journey through the mosaics of Ravenna. I know, Santa Polinare Nuovo, Santa Polinare Classe and so on, very beautiful, but there are a couple of monuments you absolutely cannot miss, the Mausoleum of Galla Placidia and the San Vitale Basilica. Let's go! So, if you have just one day, I suggest you to start your visit here. The San Vitale Basilica is maybe the most Byzantine in Ravenna. The plan and the dome remind of an oriental church. Inside, stunning mosaics cover entirely the walls of the church. That is also full of great decorations and plasters, such as the capitals sculpted in Byzantium. Just outside is the mausoleum of Galla Placidia, Roman Empress who actually died in Rome and therefore was never buried in Ravenna, but anyway, its starry sky and other mosaics are of a great impact, because they are closer to the visitors, given the small size of the site, which inspired a song from the American composer Cole Porter, who visited it on his honeymoon. Today the mosaics are part of the daily life of the citizens, as can be seen from the urban decoration of the streets, the fountains and the public parks. I'm waiting for the San Francis Basilica to open because, guys, here inside there is something truly amazing, something I have never seen anywhere else. Under the altar of the church there is an old crypt which, due to the phenomenon of the subsidence, uh, the ground is sinking, is now 10 feet lower than the floor of the church, 
and this crypt is full of water, because once again the sea... It, no, I'm joking, uh, this time the sea has nothing to do with it. But, depending on the rainfall and the tide level, the water level inside the crypt also changes. On the floor of the crypt there are the remains of a mosaic that sometimes get rusty, but not because the tiles are made of metal, of course not, but because some tourists sometimes confuse it for the Trevi Fountain and throw a coin in it to get lucky. So the mosaic gets rusty and the crypt has to be emptied to be cleaned. What never gets rusty is the popularity of a huge Italian writer, whose funeral was celebrated right here in the San Francis Basilica. You know who I'm talking about, Alighieri Durante, Dante to his friends, who, during a trip back to Ravenna from Venice, on behalf of the Dapolenta family, uh, the governors of Ravenna who welcomed him during the last years of his life, what did he do? He passed by Comacchio, a swampy area nearby, he contracted malaria, and so Dante died in Ravenna in September 1321, 700 years ago. And this time, unfortunately, the sea played a negative role in the history of the city. At first, Dante's remains were placed inside the church, in a chapel of the Dapolenta family, and then Mm, then there is an incredible story about Dante's remains I want to tell you. You have to know that Florence tried several times to get Dante's remains back, until 1519. Well, when he was alive they exiled him, later they asked for his remains, but anyway, 1519, a Toscan delegation was allowed to come to Ravenna to get Dante's bones back to Florence, thanks to Leone X, Pope from the Toscan family Medici. So, 1519, they came here, they opened the grave and the bones were missing, because in the meantime the Franciscan friars had made a hole from outside in the wall of the former temple, this one was built in 1780, and so they stole Dante's remains so that the Toscans couldn't take them to Florence. Rascal those friars, weren't they? And then no news about the bones until 1865. Later on someone discovered that the friars hid the bones also in 1810 to protect them from Napoleon. But anyway, no clue until 1865. But there is another thing I want to tell you. Come with me. Ma venite con me perché ve lo voglio far vedere bene. So, we are in 1865. During the restoration work for the 6th centenary of Dante's birth, a few steps from Dante's grave, a bricklayer made a surprising discovery. Dove vediamo questo muro? He was working right here. This may look like a simple wall, but behind the door he found a case with a right on it. But he was illiterate. If it was for him, he could have thrown the case away. But in the meantime, people heard about the finding and a student from the university read on the case Ossa Dantis, Latin for Dante's bones. So, stop everyone, no one lift a finger, you're throwing away Dante's bones? Are you nuts? It's not your grocery list. They didn't really talk like that in the past, but anyway, a happy ending. From that moment on, Dante's remains rest in the monument we have just seen. Dante, who is nowadays celebrated in every possible way. Theme itineraries, uh, the theater, murals on the walls of the city, an exhibit at the Ravenna Art Museum. The city celebrates him in the streets even when the night comes, and the city market is the best place where to go, warm up a bit, uh, taste one of the many specialties, hang out with friends and wait for the evening show or concert as suggested by the faces of the Fab Four from Liverpool, who have nothing to do with Ravenna, but they are always cool. The following morning Ravenna wakes up early, last days before Christmas, and the streets are full of people. The children are jumping under the tree in the main square, 
The youth slips away on the ice skating rink. It's time for the last minute gifts and I... Well, I go back to the seaside. Yes, yeah, the sea again. Here we close the circle, guys. I began to tell you the story of Ravenna from the sea and here I am to greet you and to remind you to subscribe my channel to discover another piece of Italy next time. See you! Yeah, but Italy is the other way. This way just water. Hey, follow me.